So I'm just praying that this will be a time of refreshments for us all so we can go out and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in our community. So are y'all ready to worship this evening? Yeah. Amen. Are y'all ready to worship this evening? Well, let's stand up and sing some praises.
Amen. Amen. Won't you come and go before the throne of grace with me? Father, we thank you for this night, oh God. We just thank you for the opportunity to gather once again and worship you in spirit and in truth. And so, God, as the song says on tonight, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you into this place tonight. We welcome you into our lives tonight. God, we welcome you in our situations tonight. So as you come, have your way, Holy Spirit. Move within us. Move around us. And if you have to just move us, oh God. So we pray now as worship goes forward that it will be pleasing in your sight, oh God. I ask now that you just bless me mightily, oh God, as I stand to proclaim a word from on high tonight. Father, we pray that souls will be saved tonight. Father, we pray that lives will be refreshed on tonight. Father, we pray that you will just move mightily in this house on tonight. So we thank you now, God, with an anticipation moment of what you're about to do in this place. So bless now in a mighty way. In Jesus' most powerful name we pray. And the people of God said amen, amen. and amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all Holy,
something he got to tell you. He says, I've come to tell you. <laughs> it's going to get loud, y'all. <laughs> come on, come on. Kick it, kick it, kick it, kick it, kick it. Come on. He's ready. I've come to tell you.
Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Father God, your people showed up tonight to praise you. Your people showed up to worship you. Uh, Father, it is so encouraging to see the amount of joy and happiness and excitement in this room. And that is because this room is filled up with the people who know who you are. This room is filled up with the people who have been saved by Jesus Christ. Who have been washed clean from the blood of Christ. Who have been made whole and healthy by the stripes that Christ took for us. Lord, we thank you for that body. We thank you for that blood. We thank you that you are the great physician. You are the great healer. You are our salvation. You are our rock, Lord. No matter how crazy the times go and the world goes, we can stand confident on your word and your truth, and we can stand on the rock of Jesus Christ. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you that so many of these local churches can gather together and give us just a little glimpse of what heaven is going to look like with all people from all different places just coming together to worship you and praise you. So, Father God, I thank you that your Holy Spirit is moving around inside of us and moving in this room here tonight. I thank you that we have an audience with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and that you are sitting on your throne looking down and smiling at your children as we just sing praises to our Lord and our King and our Father. God, we are so blessed to be here today. I'm just so excited and look forward to this word that you have for my brother here tonight. Uh, Father, I just ask that you speak through him. Just give him an extra anointing as he comes up here. Allow the Holy Spirit to move through him. Allow him to just be a, a vessel for your grace and mercy and words to just flow through him. And let us leave this place together more unified, more excited, more fresh, refreshed, Lord, to go out and take that refreshing and just be like that, that uh, taste of cold water to a parched world. Let us just take that living water that is Christ Jesus to our homes and to our communities and to our workplaces and our schools and everywhere we go. So, Father, we just thank you for this opportunity and we just wait expectantly for the word that you have for us this evening. In your son's name we pray. Amen. All right, let me hear you just one more time. Won't you bless God in this house? Amen. It is truly a delight to be standing here before you on this, another Lord's Day. Amen. Isn't it good to be seen today and not just viewed? Do I have a witness here today? Amen. We are truly delighted to be in the house on tonight and, and night number two. And from what I can understand, night number one was just a glorious moment. Amen. Anybody still feeling the effects of the Spirit of God from on last night? And so we truly thank God for this opportunity. Uh, Pastor Johnson, Pastor Matthew, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here on this night. Amen. We greet you tonight in the only name really that matters, and that's in the name of Jesus. Do I have a witness? Yes, yes, yes. We praise him, amen, and we praise you for the opportunity. And again, we thank you for the uh, invitation to be here. Um, I just thank God for the wherewithal that he's placed in your spirit uh, to share not just the Holland Baptist, but to share with the community at large, to reach out to all of us within the community. So we thank you for adhering to the vision that God placed in you, adhering to the word of God, uh, to reach out to the community so that you might be a blessing to all. Amen. We, it, it's something to be fine, but when you reach out and be a blessing to the community, that, it's a powerful thing. It is really a powerful thing. Amen. So before we jump into our text on tonight, I want to introduce my wife with us. You already heard Pastor Matt gave a brief uh, overview, uh, my wife Michelle, of going on here on the 20th, uh, 37 years. <laughs> Well, the truth of the matter is, I was not a math major, so <laughs> <laughs> we, 
once it gets beyond 10 and 10, I'm struggling. <laughs> that's, that's just it. That's just it. Uh, we bless God for her on tonight. We bless God for our leaders of the Pleasant Grove Church, this choir, and the members that are with us on tonight. And to each and every one of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is good to be here. Lest I keep you too long, uh, I was looking for the clock. I, I didn't know if you had the big clock going somewhere. I said, let me look for the clock. I'm seeing some head shaking. There are some internal body clocks, so I'm going to make sure. Plus, it's Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. Amen. So I'm going to make sure, lest I keep you too long tonight. Uh, come and go with me. Second Samuel. Amen. Second Samuel. Uh, chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. Second Samuel, uh, chapter 6, verses 15 through 17. And then we're just going to jaywalk to verses 20 and 22, if that's all right with you. Amen. I will be reading tonight from the New Living Translation, so it may be a little different than what you see on the screen, not sure. Amen. All right. And this is what your Bible says from the New Living Translation. So David and all the people of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts of joy and the blowing of ram's horns. But as the ark of the Lord entered the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. She was filled with contempt for him. They brought the ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the special tent David had prepared for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. Verse number 20, when David returned home to bless his own family, Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. She said in disgust, how distinguished, don't worry about it, the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person might do. Verse 21, David retorted to Michal, I was dancing before the Lord who chose me over above your father and all his family. He appointed me as the leader of Israel, the people of the Lord, so I celebrate before the Lord. Yes, I am willing to look even more foolish than this, even to be humiliated in my own eyes. So for the time that is ours on tonight, as we ponder the thought of refresh and refreshing, I would like to tag this text with the thought, a fresh start, a fresh Start. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now for this time. We thank you for this moment. I pray now, oh God, that you would just be in your man. Uh, just adorn me with your Holy Spirit now as I stand behind this sacred desk. You said, whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We pray now, God, as preaching goes forth this house, that you would give us the patience to persevere on tonight. Give us the ears to hear. Give us the mind to understand. Give us a heart to receive, but also to react. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Anybody excited about a fresh start? Amen. We're always in need of a fresh start. It was a leading philosopher uh, in intellectual history that once said, you must carry the chaos within you in order to give birth to the dancing star. You must carry the chaos within you in order to give birth to the dancing star. Believe it or not, brothers and sisters, sometimes the intersections of our lives, sometimes the interruptions, sometimes the interludes that we encounter along this journey called life, uh, it leaves us sometimes with pain. It, it leaves us with problems. It sometimes leaves us in a place called anxiety. Anxiety, I believe, that really wasn't given to us to defeat us, but perhaps given to us to cause us to dance. 
to dance even in the middle of the drama that unfolds in our lives. Tim Hansel, in his book entitled, You Gotta Keep Dancing, encourages re readers that even in the midst of life's hurts, you can choose joy. Let me say that again. Even in the midst of life's hurts, you can choose joy. He goes on to write in that book that stress, that, that disappointment, that heartache and heartbreak and hurt are all a part of the human while pain is unavoidable, watch this, misery is optional. So Hansel suggests that no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what your situation in life seems to be, no matter what you're going through, friends, with God's help, we all can choose to be joyful. You see, I'm led to believe that as we choose to be joyful tonight, God opens new opportunities to get us through. Have you ever noticed, have you ever noticed, think about it, how, how moments of tragedy with God's help can be turned into moments of triumph. I know it's difficult to receive, but as I per peruse through the pages of the Bible, I realize that one of the unique characteristics of Israel's history is how tragedy frequently produced celebration. If you look back, you'll see that the tragedy of four centuries of captivity in Egypt is what produced Passover. Stay with me. Uh, the, the desecration of Israel's temple by their enemies in the second century produced Hanukkah, a celebration of commemoration of a fresh start with a temple and rededication. Even, my brothers and sisters, the threats of genocide raised against the Jews uh, in the book of Esther resulted in a celebration called the Feast of Purim. In each case, tragedy or near tragedy was resolved and it resulted in a fresh start celebration honoring the God that comes to our rescue. Aren't you glad about it tonight that you have a God that comes to your rescue? I'm led to believe tonight, people of God, that that God has the uncanny ability of, of orchestrating a fresh start on the backside of some burdensome situations. Here we are dealing with what many refer to as the backside of a pandemic, a pandemic that appears to have permanence in our society. But whichever lens you choose to look through tonight to look at our current condition, the fact of the matter is this. I'm led to believe that that because of the historicity highlighted tonight in the Word of God, uh, filled with narratives that allows us a glimpse into the lives of God's people, we witness tonight, friends, in the Word of God, that God has a way of turning times of tragedy into triumph. All you have to do is look in the book. The Bible is plenteous with proof of how tragedy often produced moments of celebration. Stay with me, if you will. Leading me to believe that God is a God of fresh starts. And so it is, really, in our text read earlier in your hearing, here we are following a, a stricken Uzzah uh, after simply trying to steady the ark. A tragedy. A tragedy, however, that later results in a dancing David. Yeah, tragedy resulting in celebration. A, a fresh start, if you will, for a fearful king. You see, David is commemorating, I believe, where he had come from, re reflecting on his yesterdays. Can I just explain it just a little bit, this premise? You see, David had recently become the king of all of Israel. No, no more northern kingdom, no more southern kingdom. He, he had recently captured Jerusalem. He had recently conquered uh, the enemies of uh, all of God's people. So now with all of the fighting behind him, David was now determined, friends, uh, to deliver the Ark of the Covenant back unto his rightful place. So here he is. Here he is. He, he had heard that for, for three months, a man by the name of Obed-Edom uh, had been blessed because of the mere fact that the Ark 
was in his house. You do recall that when David attempted earlier to get the ark of God, you remember the oxen stumbled. Say, Bible readers, just wave your hand if you remember that story tonight. The, the oxen stumbled, and Uzzah reached out to, to steady the ark, but he was struck down instead. Tragedy. Tragedy. So for three months, three months, friends, the Ark of the Covenant was in the home of Obed-Edom, a man not of the house, nor of the lineage of God's chosen people. But he was in the presence of the Lord. Are you with me tonight? And therefore, because he was in the presence of the Lord, he was blessed. And so David decided, let's go, friends, and get What's ours? Uh, let's take back our blessing. Let, let's initiate a fresh start. And so I believe as David reflected, he, he also remembered what happened to us when he reached out. So, so the more David reflected, I believe David also realized that I need the Lord's presence more than I need to be fearful. So he went down to Obed-Edom's house to get his God. And after getting the ark and only walking, as the text said, only six steps, David stopped. And I believe that the Bible says that he made a sacrifice. Mind you now, he was wearing his priestly garments. How many of you remember you try to stay cool when you have on your priestly garments sometimes, when you have on the suit and the tie? We, we try to act a certain way. Are you still with me tonight? But, but, but why was that important uh, he, that he had on his priestly garments and his robe? Well, because the handling of the ark was a priestly responsibility. And although David was not of the tribe of Levi, and so I can't help but, as I read this text, uh, view David's actions as prophetic tonight, because David positioned himself as a priest and as a king. Are you still with me? A picture of one who was to come later in his lineage. Are you still with me? Yeah. So David only after taking six steps, he, he offered a sacrifice. And I believe, saints, that, that David also realized that, that the last time we did this, we were somewhat careless. But this time they were going to be careful about moving the ark God's way. So here they are. After surviving the six steps, can you just imagine the last time someone died when we did this? But after six steps, huh, David realized God must honor this move, which resulted in David praising God. You see, David was dancing and leaping before the Lord because I believe, saints, that David was thinking about how the Lord had blessed him. And as David was thinking, David, I believe, was also thanking God for a fresh start. Therefore, this moment resulted in a moment of praise. But notice also in the text, when we attempt to praise God, there's always somebody, somewhere, whispering behind the scenes, saying things like, it don't take all of that. It don't take the raising of your voice. It doesn't take the lifting of your hands. It doesn't take all of that. In David's case, his resentment, it did, didn't just originate from anywhere. His resentment originated from his own wife. Huh, listen to her. It's, it's there in first, uh, verse 20 of the text. Uh, contemporary English version says it like this. Uh, David went home. Asked the Lord to bless his family. But Saul's daughter, Michal, went out and started yelling at him. You were really great today, she said. You acted like a dirty old man dancing around half naked in front of your servant slave girl. But listen how David handled his resentful wife tonight. He said in verse 21, David told her, look here, baby, the Lord, and I paraphrase that piece, amen, uh, the Lord didn't choose your father or anyone else in your family to be the leader of his people. The Lord chose me. So for that reason, I'm going to celebrate him on today. I'm going to honor him on today. 
sounded like to me in the text. And David was just reflecting on where God had brought him from. You do know it was God who promoted David. And so when David reflected and when David realized what God had done all throughout his life, it resulted in a praise. Have you ever been there? You had a moment where you were just sitting peaceful and you thought back to all of the things that you've been through, all of the battles that you've been through, all of the fights that you've been doing. You thought about the goodness of the Lord and how he delivered you. When David reflected, David realized, and it resulted in praise. In spite of having a resentful wife, so might I suggest tonight that King David had been carrying the chaos of others' demise with him. And now, after taking those six steps, it gave birth to dancing. Yeah, David shows us, friends, that, that in the midst of all of life's hurts, uh, we can choose joy. Do I have a witness in here tonight? In the midst of all that you go through, you can choose to be joyous tonight. In the midst of all that Wavy TV 10 says, you can choose to be joyful tonight. In the midst of all that goes on, we can choose joy. Perhaps David it felt that the pain of the past was unavoidable, but to carry the misery, it was optional. David's pain, David's predicament, it, it, it didn't prevent him from praising his God. And David discovered, I believe in this text, that, that this was indeed a fresh start for him. A fresh start for the people of God. Because you see, as we said, the last time the ark was moved, a man perished. But this time when the ark was moved, David praised. Uh, which suggests to us tonight, friends, and I'm going to run through these quickly. First of all, that a fresh start should birth a breakout praise. Point one, a fresh start should birth a breakout praise. Are you still with me? They had just gotten the ark of God from old Bed Edom's house. And the Bible says, after the men who were carrying the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, David sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. And David danced before the Lord with all of his might, wearing his priestly garment. Might I submit tonight, friends, as I look at this text, that after you've been blessed by the Lord, it should spark you to break out in praise. Let me say that again. After you've been blessed by the Lord, it should spark you. It do, should do something down inside of you to break out in praise. You see, when God comes through for you, when God raises you from a, pray, a place of pain, when God releases you from a place of peril, when God delivers you from a place called despair, when God blesses you after you've been battling with life, burdens. Uh, we ought to praise God with the fruit of our lips, crying out, Lord, I thank you. After you've been through what you've been through, you, you ought to have the choir said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. You see, friends, praise shouldn't be a problem when we've been promoted out of our painful places. Do I have a witness in here tonight? So first of all, a fresh start should birth a breakout praise. But secondly, tonight, a fresh start should provoke us to prepare. A fresh start should provoke us to prepare. And they brought the ark of the Lord, verse 17 says, and set it in its place inside the special tent. Watch this. David had prepared for it. You see, David didn't just pray for the presence of the Lord. They prepared in advance of the presence of the Lord. How many of us prepare before we come into the house of the Lord, before we go into the presence of the Lord? How often do we prepare ourselves? I admit tonight that when 
Many of us want to be in the presence of the Lord when we desire to be with God, when we desire something from God. Uh, we, we decide, I'm going to prepare to go to God. But, but the issue is we must also prepare before we ask God for anything. Uh, parents, come on and help me out tonight. Uh, you, you, you don't want your children just to come out of nowhere and ask you for any and everything. At least try to butter me up. At least try to talk to me. At least have some words with me. We must pre prepare, prepare, prepare. You do recall the story in the book of Acts where the church was praying for Peter that night. You remember that? And when Peter was released and went to the house where the people were praying, Rhoda, the servant girl, didn't realize, nor did the people realize that what they were praying for <laughs> and who they were praying for was already in their presence. Yeah, they, 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 can't you see them now? They were earnestly praying that night in prayer meeting. You, you know how it is when, when you get some faithful folk to come out and earnestly pray at prayer meeting. But the problem was uh, they were prepared for God's answer. You see, because Peter was released from prison. And, and as Peter was released from prison, he goes to the prayer meeting and knocks on the door. But, but the answer to their prayers was standing there, but they just wasn't prepared to receive the answer. Peter couldn't enter the prayer meeting. Because the folk weren't prepared. But I believe David, on the other hand, realized that although we not, might not prepare to be with God, I'm so glad tonight, saints, that God prepares to be with us. Aren't you glad about it tonight? God prepares to be with us. That God desires to dine with us because he would later write, he, he prepares a table before me. Uh, he said, in the presence of mine enemies, are you still with me? I, I believe David knows that God prepares for him. Do I have a witness in here tonight? And so in the, as I think about it tonight, since we're desiring a fresh start, a refresh moment, what have you done to prepare to be with the Lord? What have you done to prepare for the Lord? What have you done today to prepare to be in his presence? I'll let you ponder on that. I got to move on. So a fresh start should birth a breakout praise. A fresh start should provoke us to prepare. But thirdly, notice this in this text, verses 18 and 19. I discovered that a fresh start blessing is not a self-centered blessing. A fresh start blessing is not self-centered blessing. Well, preacher, what are you talking about? When he had finished his sacrifices. David blessed the people. Let me say that again. When he finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. Verse 19, they gave to every Israelite, tell somebody every, every, every Israelite man and woman in the crowd, a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. Then all of the people returned to their homes. You see, saints, when God blessed David, David blessed others. Amen. Might I submit to you tonight, saints of God, that God doesn't simply bless us so that we can say we are a blessed people. No, I believe there are two main reasons tonight why God blesses us. First of all, God blesses us because he loves us. Amen. Do I have a way? Aren't you glad God loves us tonight? But secondly, I believe God blesses us because he wants us to become a blessing to others. So the bottom line is that blessings flow from God, but they should never stop with you and with me. Blessings come to us, but then blessings, I believe, should flow through us. Do I have a witness here tonight? Proverbs 11 teaches us that God blesses those who are generous but withholds blessings from the greedy. So might I suggest tonight, church, that God's blessings are not meant to be totally consumed just by us. We got to move on. So a fresh start should birth a breakout praise. A fresh start should provoke us to prepare. 
A fresh start blessing is not a self-centered blessing. But fourthly, a fresh start can't be hampered because of haters. A fresh start can't be hampered because of haters. Watch this. When David returned home to bless his own family, his wife, Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. Text says, she said in disgust, how, how disgusting the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like a vulgar person might do. Can I tell you that haters will always try to hamper your praise? Help me a little bit in here tonight. Just help me. Haters will always try to hamper your praise. But, but if you're seeking a fresh start, if, if you're seeking to be refreshed by God tonight, whatever you do, don't allow your neighbor to hamper your praise. Don't allow anybody to hamper your praise. Oh, you want to cry out, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will lift my hands unto the Lord. <laughs> Why drive all the way to church to be hampered? Why drive all the way to church to be hampered? <laughs> Why do we allow others to block our blessings? Somebody right now, perhaps they're online watching, you're sitting in your own home, in your own spaces, but, but your praise is hampered because you're worried about what other folk are going to say. But can I just drop something in your ear tonight? You see, God inhabits the praises of his people. Do I have a witness in here tonight? So, so we can't sit here and suffer because a, a praise hater is holding you hostage tonight. And that's what David, David was not going to allow a praise hater to hold him hostage. So he didn't mind coming out of his clothes. He didn't mind blessing the Lord. In the text it says, David's wife, I don't Know who you're allowing tonight to hamper your praise, who, who's trying to block your praise. But I, I suggest you take a look at how David handled the situation in the text. He said, look here, I will become even more dignified than this, even more undignified than this. Yes, I, I'm willing to look even more foolish than this. Have you ever thought to yourself, I, I just look foolish today in church, but, but it was that good. Uh, it, it, it was a feeling that came up on the inside. Uh, your hair was turned crooked. You, you lost your glasses, but, but you didn't mind looking foolish for the Lord. No, we don't mind looking foolish for the Lord. I'm willing to shame, as David said, and humiliate myself even more than this. <laughs> because when you reflect on where God has brought you from, when you reflect on the hills that he brought you over, when, when you reflect on how he made a way out of no way, when, when you reflect on how good he's been, when you reflect on how doors were slammed in your face, when you reflect on the mercy of God, when you reflect on his healing powers, when you reflect on his goodness, you can't help but give him a praise. So we should refuse to be hampered Tonight, the cause of haters, that's why the songwriter, I believe, penned those words. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. Are there, is there anybody in the house tonight that don't mind saying, praise God for saving me? Are there any hallelujahs in the house tonight? Hallelujah is the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. What a refreshing reminder we get from David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's been good. He's been good. <laughs> When you think back, if you've ever been on your sick bed, when, when you think back, you, you didn't know if you were going to make it. When, when you think back to the prognosis of the doctor, when you think back to what you've been through, when you think about how many had given up on you, when you think about it. Can't, can't, help, can't help but praise it. Huh. Ah, what a refreshing, what a refreshing. So a fresh start should birth a breakout praise. A fresh start should provoke us to prepare. A fresh start blessing 
is not a self-centered blessing. A fresh start can't be hampered because of hatred. But as we prepare to close tonight, saints, I would like to leave you with a final point, and that is a fresh start initiates thinking, but also thanking. A fresh start. As you have been here this week for refresh, it should initiate some thinking, but it should also initiate some thinking. And David retorted, it says in the text, to Michal, I was dancing before the Lord who chose me above your father and all of his family. He appointed me as the leader of Israel as the leader of the people of the Lord. So I celebrate before the Lord. And David, I believe, was thinking about where God had brought him from, thinking about how God bet on him when he was just a ruddy little boy out stinking in the field. I believe that David remembered how God chose him over a man named Saul, a king who was high in the land thinking about, I believe, as he looked back over his life, when a lion and a bear came and carried off the sheep from the flock. David, remember, went out and struck it and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on him, David, remember, seized it in his hair, struck it, and killed it. I don't know tonight what was going through his mind. Perhaps he was thinking about what uh, he, he told Goliath, that, that you're coming out to fight against me with a sword, a spear, and javelin, but, but I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord. I, I don't know who you're fighting against tonight. I, I don't know what you're fighting up against, but, but just say to that fight tonight, just say to that opponent tonight, I come before you in the name of the Lord. I, oh yes, I, I come before you tonight, and, and I believe as David began to dance, I can't dance, so I can't give you anything. I, he 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 remembered as he looked back over his life. And, and I believe tonight, saints, the more David remembered, uh, the more dancing became natural. Uh, is there anybody under the sound of my voice tonight uh, that don't mind dancing for God? That, that when you think about the goodness of the Lord, uh, is there anybody here that can reflect on uh, God has brought you from tonight, uh, when you can reflect on uh, what God has brought you to tonight, uh, that you don't mind dancing uh, and you don't mind giving him praise. Uh, are there any praisers in the house tonight uh, that don't mind crying out? Uh, I will bless the Lord uh, at all times. Uh, are you hearing me tonight? Uh, because when I think about uh, all the things uh, that God has done for me, uh, I can't help but thank him. Uh, I can't help but thank him. Uh, is there anybody here tonight uh, that don't mind thanking the Lord? Uh, how he set me free. Uh, how he healed my body. Uh, how he gave me peace. Uh, so as we close tonight, uh, as we close tonight, uh, I believe uh, that David was thinking, uh, and as David was thinking, uh, I believe it helped David because he went on to pen some psalms. Uh, David said, oh my Lord and my God, uh, in you I put my trust. Uh, but in Psalm 8 we see, uh, oh Lord, our Lord, uh, how how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Psalm 9 says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. But Psalm 11 says, in you, Lord, I will put my trust. Uh, I believe uh, that David was in a good place. Uh, I believe uh, that David was thinking and thinking about the Lord. Uh, that's why uh, he said in Psalm 27, uh, the Lord is my light uh, and my salvation. Uh, whom shall I fear? Uh, the Lord is the strength of my life. Uh, whom shall 
not be afraid. But in Psalm 32, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered. But I believe when it seemed like that David was at a distant place, when it seemed like God had abandoned him, I believe when Psalm 40 came to his mind, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined and heard my cry. Maybe David was thinking when he sinned before God. Maybe he was thinking of Psalm 51. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out, I said, blot out my transgressions. Wash me, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me. I said, cleanse me from my sin. I believe David was thinking, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. But it didn't end there. I believe David danced that day. He was thinking in his days as a shepherd, thinking how God was with him and how God restored him and thinking how God covered him and how God kept him. And I think he, as he danced, he thought about it. He was thinking back. And so he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. I'm so glad tonight, church, that we can celebrate, that we can have a fresh start in the midst of what we've been through. Aren't you glad about it? Say yes. Say yes. said, I'm so glad that we serve the God, a God of second chances, a God of third chances, a God of many chances. Ain't he all right? Bad English, but ain't he all right? He's all right. Say yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad, I'm so glad tonight that God is a God of a fresh start. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Yes. Songwriter said I was sinking deep in sin, so far from the shore. <laughs> no peace in my life, far from the people. But Jesus, the master. <laughs> aren't you glad he lifted you aren't you glad that he lifted you to give you a fresh start so don't, please don't take this week for granted this refreshing moment is vital you know I was watching the other night and boxing came on and just that little bit of time the guy was getting pummeled he went to the corner, they whispered a few things to him, put the grease all over his face so that I guess the gloves could slide off, I don't know. But he said, I don't have anything else. He said, it's round one, it's, it's, it's a tie right now. It's, it's round one. Watch this so you have a fresh start. Whatever happened in the past, whatever happened in the previous rounds, don't worry about it. You have a fresh start right now. You can still win this thing. And I stopped by to tell you tonight, you can still win this thing. The race isn't given to Swift. <laughs> Are you willing to endure tonight? Are you willing to keep running tonight? Are you willing to keep running to get the prize? Hallelujah.
Amen. Let's give it up. Amen. Amen. Is, is the choir and the band just gets up here and, and ready to lead us in a, a last song. I just want to know or let you to know a, just a, a word came to me, another part of what it looks like with a fresh start. If you get a fresh start, you will play the part or look the part of a fool. If you get a fresh start, you will look like a fool. Just look at David. Look at how the world viewed him. They thought he was foolish. They couldn't understand it. They couldn't comprehend it. He was just a bear in the family. He was a bear in his neighbors and his friends. And he was looking like a fool. But what they don't realize, what so many people in the world don't realize, is if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you are a fool. You are a fool. And so many Christians today, so many Christians today are so scared of going out into the world and looking like a fool that they just mimic what the world does. Church, you need to understand that if we truly have a fresh start in Christ Jesus, we will look like a fool to the lost. And that should be a testimony that we are living the right way. And I want you to know, I want you to know why David was so excited, the way the, the willing to dance like that and play the part of the fool is because right here in the text, two things, it talks about when his wife was yelling at him and all, he mentions he didn't do it. He didn't do it for, for her. He didn't do it for the other people. It says it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father to appoint me ruler. You see, he was willing to act the fool because he was chosen and he was appointed. And church, you need to realize that if you have been saved by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you have been chosen. You are chosen. You have been chosen before the foundation of the world to be his prized possession, to be the apple of his eye, to be his treasure, to be his people. You are chosen. So that should make you want to act a fool with passion and excitement. You need to realize that you haven't just been chosen to be a child of God, but you have been appointed. You have been appointed to be a holy nation. You have been appointed to be royal ambassadors. You have been point, appointed to be a holy people. And to the world, that will look like we're fools. But as we sing this last song together, I want to give you the opportunity. You can either, if you're not saved, you can leave this place and continue to be a fool. Or you can come and just get that fresh start and go out of here acting like a fool for Jesus Christ. So that's what I hope that this refreshing does. I hope that we go out into this world and look foolish to the lost, but to the church and to the Lord, we'll put a smile on His face because we look like our Father. We look like our Lord and Savior. So if you need to come this evening and just receive that fresh start, if you need to uh, confess and profess and proclaim that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, then now's the time to come and do that, and we would love to celebrate with you this evening. We would love to celebrate with you. If you are not going to a church currently and you're just a member of the community, I urge you to get plugged in. All of these churches that are represented in this community are led by some godly men that will make you and help you and give you everything you need to equip you to be a disciple. Each of these churches have a loving church family. So I encourage you, if you're currently unchurched, but you are a child of God, get plugged in to Kingdom Impact. Get plugged in to a Pleasant Grove or the Holland Baptist or the a Cross Point or Celebration Church. Get plugged in and be a part of a foolish people who are looking foolish for the Lord. All right? Let us just stand and sing together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Father God, we just thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this time of refreshing. We thank you for the reminder of what it looks like to just have a fresh start. Uh, so, Father, we just need to realize, and I hope we understand that each morning that you awaken us, we're given the opportunity to have a fresh start, to have a day to bring you glory and honor and praise, to live fully for you, to be faithful and obedient disciples. So, Father, I just pray that as we leave this place, we don't just cool off from this time of refreshing. We don't let this fire dim down. Lord, I just pray that we stay fired up, burned up, just, just saturated with, with your spirit and the excitement and the passion that we will have the same heart that King David had. And, Lord, we will just can't stand it. We'll just break out into dance, and we're just so excited about you, Lord. So, Father, help us to go out to this community and to all the um, uh, neighborhoods that we live in and that we commute to, Lord, and just let us be Christ in this community. Yes. And, Father, we just ask that we be a refreshing uh, to this lost world, that we will refresh them with the gospel message of Jesus Christ, the message of hope and joy and forgiveness and salvation. Father, just keep us safe, protect us, guide us, lead us, direct us, and bring us back here again next uh, tomorrow night for another night of refreshing. In your Son's name, in our Savior's name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.